Today we'll be looking at the Recreational Pharmacology Iceberg. This iceberg was created by Reddit user PsychologicalAd5617. So the first few levels of the iceberg are pretty well known. I think most people would know most of these drugs. I'm going to go over a couple from the first three that are just have some interesting information. I also got my crackhead sock on my mic. Oh, and disclaimer before I start. Besides me looking like a meth dealer, I don't do drugs, I don't even drink coffee, and I don't recommend you take any drugs either. So this video is only supposed to be informative. Obviously don't take any of this as advice. Don't do drugs. None of this is medical advice. I'm not an expert. I just did some research because I was morbidly curious and I already knew some of these on the list. But yeah, obviously don't do drugs. So starting on the third layer, we have LSD. LSD is short for lysergic acid diethylamide. It is a potent psychedelic that induces mental, visual, and auditory hallucination. So interestingly enough, LSD was actually derived from a type of fungus that grows on grains called ergot. It was originally discovered in 1943 by a Swiss doctor named Dr. Albert Hoffman. Originally when LSD was made, it was always made in labs and was being used in the medical community for experiments and testing. LSD also gained the interest of the CIA trying to use it as a brainwashing drug. So LSD wasn't initially illegal, it was just hard to get. As it got more popular in recreational use, it was easier to access. A large portion of the drug supply was actually in Czechoslovakia, and there, LSD was so attainable, you could just go to a drugstore and ask for it and get it with no problem. Now, there's a lot of obvious side effects to LSD, but one of the notable ones are called flashbacks. And a flashback is an experience where someone starts hallucinating months after taking the drug. So they're not on LSD, but randomly they start hallucinating. And this has been a phenomenon that's been noted many times. So there's a good reason not to do LSD. You might start tripping balls driving on the highway or some shit. Wax is a concentrate of oils taken from marijuana plants. It's significantly stronger than normal marijuana and is typically only used by heavy weed enthusiasts. It's also pretty well known. Okay, so modafinil is a central nervous system stimulant that's used for excessive sleepiness in people who have narcolepsy. It's also used as an off-label drug for depression. Modafinil was originally created by the military to be used as a wakefulness agent to promote alertness when soldiers had not slept enough. Now, modafinil is actually not as strong as other things like Adderall. It creates less euphoric effects, which also means it's less addictive and people tend to take it less. I guess it's lower on the iceberg just because it's less well known. So shrooms, which I'm pretty sure everyone knows, is a short form for psilocybin mushrooms. In these fungi, there is a substance called psilocybin, which creates hallucinations. And that's really all you gotta know. Kratom is an herbal extract from the leaves of a tropical tree that's actually part of the coffee family. Kratom affects opioid receptors, but at different doses, it causes different effects. At low doses, it has the effect of a stimulant. At moderate doses, it relieves pain and also causes euphoria. At high doses, it becomes a sedative. Kratom is addictive and can be abused, despite the reputation of just being an herbal extract. And it's kind of in a legal gray area in a lot of countries. And it seems like it's going to be effectively banned in a lot of places, and already has in other places. Nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, is an atypical disassociative, and is taken in the form of a gas that's inhaled. Nitrous oxide is very easily accessible because it's found in these whipped cream charger cartridges that are referred to as whippets. So people will inhale out of these small cartridges. You can get them. Actually, I'm not going to tell you where you can get them. Don't get them. The primary effects of nitrous oxide are sedation, dissociation, and euphoria. It must be noted, though, that long-term use of nitrous oxide is very neurotoxic and is essentially terrible for the brain. So don't do it. I feel like I have to say don't do it at the end of every drug, but you get it. Don't do them. Don't do drugs. Hydrocodone is a prescription opioid used to treat pain. It's a semi-synthetic derivative of codeine, and codeine is found in opium poppies. Hydrocodone is typically seen as a milder form of oxycodone or heroin, 
and its primary effects are relaxation and euphoria. Hydrocodone is extremely addictive and can cause fatal overdoses, specifically through liver toxicity. Here's a fun fact. In 2007, 99% of the world's supply of hydrocodone was actually consumed just in the United States. And that's why Big Pharma is always your friend, right? Okay, now on to tier four. DXM is short for dextrotrometho... Dextrotrometho... Dextrometho... Fuck. DXM is short for dextromorthor... Fuck. DXM is short for dextromethorphan. DXM is a disassociative substance that's found in over-the-counter cold and cough medicine. Effects include dissociation, time distortion, motor loss control, euphoria, and being a big dum-dum. Users describe low doses as similar to alcohol and then higher doses similar to ketamine or PCP. DXM is popular due to its low cost and its ease of access, usually in the form of cough syrup. So DXM at very high doses is definitely not a fun one. Let me read off some of the things that can happen. Okay, so at very high doses, you can have the inability to urinate, great, hallucinations, dysphoria, delirium, psychosis, complete disassociation, amnesia, and something called physical autonomy, which means people wake up in odd locations doing things and they're unsure how they got there or what happened. There's also something called frame rate suppression that can happen, which means the visual information coming to your eyes can't be processed quick enough. So your vision starts like lagging in real life. And it can even lag so hard it freeze frames on one image. So you'll be walking around with like just one image of something that already happened. So I think that's enough to make you never try DXM in your life. Sounds terrible. I actually knew a guy who was addicted to DXM and he always had scrapes and bruises all over his arms because he would get loss of motor control and fall off curbs all the time and just wreck himself. And then completely unrelated to the DXM, he also believed he was a secret agent for the CIA uh, and that the voices in his head were actually messages from the CIA being directly beamed into his brain. But he was a nice guy, he was cool. Okay, Xanax is pretty well known, but I don't think people know how bad of an addiction it can be. The actual name of Xanax is Alprazolam. Xanax is a prescription anti-anxiety drug that's in the class of benzodiazepines. At low doses, the effects are somewhat similar to alcohol, such as sedation, anxiety reduction, muscle relaxation, and disinhibition. So Xanax is highly addictive and has a high potential of abuse. And something a lot of people don't know is that withdrawals from benzodiazepines can be extremely bad and can even be fatal. They're considered one of the worst drugs to come off of. Okay, the next one is 2CB, and I'm gonna have to read the name of this because it's impossible. 4-bromo-2, 5-dimethoxyphenylethylamine. 2CB is a similar psychedelic to mescaline. It was created in the 70s and was actually legal for quite a while. It was available in adult video shops because it was sold as a aphrodisiac, but it was eventually banned in 1995. Its main effects are open and closed eye visuals, euphoria, time distortion, and increased libido. It is seen as less strong as other psychedelics such as LSD or psilocybin mushrooms, and has a different range of effects, but is still a psychedelic. I feel like this is a pretty rare drug to come across, but like all of them, don't do it. Poppers is a slang term for alkyl nitrates, which are volatile liquids that give off gases that if inhaled, cause muscle relaxation. It is commonly used in the LGBT community, and you can imagine what muscle they're trying to relax. I won't go into detail, but you can figure it out. Phenobut is a depressive substance that is similar to other anticonvulsants. Phenobut was created in the 1960s in the Soviet Union and was used to treat anxiety. In the rest of the world, it hasn't been approved for clinical use 
and is actually used for supplemental use. Some people believe it acts like a nootropic, which is questionable to be honest. And it's questionable because this drug is an anticonvulsant and they typically cause sedation and a bit of impairment in cognition. So I'm not sure how it would be a nootropic, but that's how it's advertised to some people. High doses are known to have similar effects as alcohol or benzodiazepines. It can be dangerous when mixed with other drugs because it's a respiratory depressant, so it can affect your breathing. Also, it's a drug that takes a long time to go into action. So with drugs like this, people sometimes get impatient and take more of the drug thinking it didn't work. This never ends up well. Now in North America, it's not a controlled substance, so you're actually legally allowed to have it without a prescription or anything. Which is interesting, but I guess because it's under the classification of a supplement. But it seems like a loophole similar to Kratom, and it's probably going to get cracked down on eventually. Now I'm not sure why race tams are even on this list. They actually fall under the category of nootropic, and I can't find much about the abuse of them. Some people take them for their cognitive effects, I guess, but I don't know. That being said, in a lot of places, they are prescription medicine. So maybe there's just not a lot of information out there. And an actual expert could probably ex explain why it's on the list. LSA, short form for lysergic acid amide, is a naturally occurring psychedelic. It is found in morning glory seeds and is considered close to LSD. They both derive from ergot. So similar to LSD, so we already know about that. The other ones on this level are pretty well known. Valium, also known as diazepam, is just another benzodiazepine, similar to Xanax. Speed is amphetamine, which is a stimulant. We know about that. And MDMA is ecstasy, which is a drug that most people know. Now on to tier five. Inhalants refer to a wide range of household and industrial chemicals that create volatile vapors that if inhaled can cause intoxication. Now for the classification of an inhalant, it has to be able to release these vapors at room temperature. So things like marijuana, which you have to ignite, would not be an inhalant, obviously. Now there's so many possible inhalants to cover that it could be a whole other video. But the take home message is using inhalants is basically speed running brain damage. RC tryptamine is referring to psychedelic designer drugs. Now designer drugs are analogs of other illegal drugs. And the goal is to make drugs that are technically legal, but have the same effect as illegal drugs. The only problem is half the time the new drugs are actually worse than the original drugs. Designer drugs are usually new formulations, so this makes them risky because there's not a lot of information on them or experiences that people have had. So essentially, you're just going to be a lab rat for some guy making drugs in his kitchen or some shit. Ketamine is a disassociative anesthetic, and it's used for surgical purposes. As well, more recently, it's used in the treatment of depression. And then, of course, it's used recreationally. There are a lot of possible effects for ketamine such as motor control loss, pain relief, internal hallucinations, memory suppression, immersion enhancement, euphoria, and depersonalization. Users of ketamine often experience a hallucinogenic state known as a K-hole. K-holes are described as extreme dissociation, which often feels like you're outside of your body, or sometimes people describe it like a near-death experience. Hydromorphone is a semi-synthetic opioid that is similar to heroin or morphine. It has to be injected due to low oral bioavailability and has the same effects as most opioids, which is euphoria, relaxation, and pain relief. RC benzos are another designer drug that's trying to mimic the effects of benzodiazepines. Like I said before, they're risky because you're essentially being a guinea pig for some dude in his kitchen cooking up some random drugs. Mescaline is a psychedelic that's derived from the naturally occurring peyote cactus. Now the primary effects of mescaline are open and closed eye visuals, time distortion, enhanced introspection, conceptual thinking, euphoria, and ego loss. Ego loss, which is common and possible with all psychedelics, is when you basically forget who you are and your former memories. 
This only happens while you're on the drug. You regain your memories afterwards. Mescaline is considered to be a more gentle psychedelic and is more of a body high than a very cerebral intense high. Users of mescaline describe the body high as being able to feel each individual nerve ending all over the body. And you also get like these washes of pins and needle feelings that flow all over the body. A rare side effect that can happen is called synesthesia. Synesthesia is described as when your senses start coming together in weird forms. Like you may be able to taste music or hear smells. DMT, which is short for dimethyltryptamine, also known by a street name, Joe Rogan, is a psychedelic that is known for having very intense and short-lived effects. DMT is actually found widely in nature in over 65 species of plants. It's also found in the human body in many locations. DMT is concentrated in something called the pineal gland, which is in the brain. And when you die, some of this DMT is released. Now this is a topic that's very controversial and is often contested. There's some evidence that points towards it being true and some evidence pointing towards it not being true. So there's no real medical consensus on this. DMT is usually smoked and it affects you very quickly. Some people claim they make contact with other beings, maybe aliens, maybe demons, I don't know, but other beings. And this is a common effect that happens is you will communicate with something. Now, after you smoke DMT, there's recognized stages that tend to happen to most people. The first stage is called the breakthrough. So at this point, auditory and visual hallucinations start but very mildly. And then it feels like you are pulled through onto the other side of like a membrane or something. And now you're in a whole other alternate reality. The second stage is called the waiting room. And people describe this as like a loading screen or a waiting room when they break through, transporting them to this next dimension. It's often seen as like a geometric tunnel that's constantly moving. The next stage is the main stage of DMT, and this is where you spend the most time. This is where you're brought to this alternate reality, and it's usually a vast landscape with varying scenarios or varying individuals or beings, and it's different every time, but it feels like you've been transported to another dimension, another reality. It's nothing like your present reality. This is often where people have life-changing experiences, or at least experiences that change how they perceive the world around them. The last stage is the drift down, and this feels like you're being pulled away from this alternate reality scenario, slowly and slowly, until you appear back into your reality. Okay, now this one's an interesting one, nutmeg. There is a substance found in nutmeg called myristicin, which is a naturally occurring deliriant. Now this is the first deliriant we've covered, but typically deliriants are not an enjoyable experience. Mystricin also has heavy anticholinergic effects. Now what this does is it blocks the creation of acetylcholine in the brain. And acetylcholine is essential in cognition, new memory formation, and muscular control. Like I said earlier, delirians are usually considered a bad experience, but mystricin is considered the most tolerable out of all of them. That being said, they still suck. The effects include difficulty urinating, which is described as feeling like your urethra is blocked by concrete. And then at the same time, you also have an intense need to pee. So that's just torture, essentially. Other effects include memory loss and amnesia, confusion and depersonalization, psychosis, strong sedation, an inability to speak, dry mouth, and dehydration. There are some enjoyable effects like euphoria, increased social ability, and relaxation, but I think it's safe to say to stay the fuck away from nutmeg. NBOME is a very dangerous synthetic hallucinogen that is often passed off as LSD. NBOME, which is often referred to as NBOM, is a very new drug and has only been used in recreational use since 2010. Something interesting about the drug is it can only be taken sublingually, which means under the tongue, or snorted. When taken orally, it's not effective. NBMOE is very potent, 
which has resulted in a lot of hospitalizations and deaths. Clonopin is just another benzodiazepine, it just has a longer duration of effect. Crack, meth, and heroin are very well known, so I think we should skip over those ones. Now taking a look at tier 6. Soma is the brand name for the drug Carisoprodol, which is a muscle relaxer and pain reliever. It's a bit of an oddball drug, it's defined as a sedative hypnotic, and when combined with opioids or other benzodiazepines, it boosts the effects of these other drugs. Soma is extremely sedating and has very brutal withdrawal, it is not prescribed very often anymore, and has been mostly replaced by benzodiazepines. This makes it a very rare drug and hard to find. PCP, also known as phenacyclidine, is a notorious street drug that's under the class of dissociative anesthetic. PCP is the most likely to cause psychosis and mania compared to other disassociatives, such as ketamine. There are a lot of urban myths surrounding PCP, where people will do very disturbing, violent acts while on the drug. It seems like this was mostly made up by the media. It's a very rare occurrence that these things happen. PCP, despite being an anesthetic, is actually very stimulating, which means it's not very good for medical use. Long-term use of PCP is disastrous for your body and can create chronic long-term hallucinations and psychotic episodes. It can lead to severe memory loss, trouble thinking, severe depression, and even skeletal muscular breakdown. Like I said earlier, the effects of PCP were overblown by the media, but I do remember on YouTube some guy being tased while on PCP, and he just fucking beasted that shit. Didn't even affect them. So maybe there is some truth to it. Fentanyl, which is very well known now due to its effects of frequently causing overdoses and deaths. Fentanyl is an opioid that's 50 times more potent than heroin. Fentanyl has a short duration, is not very euphoric, and is also very sedative compared to other opioids. Because of these reasons, fentanyl isn't used that often recreationally, but where it appears a lot is when it's cut with other drugs, because fentanyl is cheap and it will increase the power of these other drugs, so often dealers will cut fentanyl into the drugs they're already distributing, just to make some extra money. This is where a lot of the overdoses happen because since it's so potent, you have to be very exact on how much you put into other drugs. And a lot of dealers don't know this and they put way too much and people overdose. Just skin contact with fentanyl can actually cause an overdose and has in multiple occasions. Spice is a synthetic cannabinoid that mimics the effects of marijuana. Despite marijuana being a very safe drug, spice is not. It has been linked with death and dangerous side effects. There is very little research that was done on synthetic weed, and it's very unpredictable. The only reason it was popular was because it was legal, where marijuana was not. DPT, which is short for dipropyltramine, is a psychedelic similar to DMT, but has a longer course of effect and is much more unpredictable. DPT gained notoriety because it was associated with a church named the Temple of the True Light, which was a Christian-based religion that believed psychedelics were the real true gods, I guess. DPT is in a gray area of legality, so this means it's often used as an alternative to DMT. The hallucinations from DPT tend to be unsettling and darker than those from DMT. DPT is known to more frequently produce a hallucinogenic state called a machinescape. A machinescape is when you hallucinate a large landscape of all these mechanical things moving like gears and cogs and levers and pistons. This apparently happens on DPT quite often. Benzofurans are a relatively new type of drug that are classified as stimulants and antactogens. Antactogens produce strong emotions and social effects similar to those of MDMA. Just like I mentioned with other drugs that are new, they're typically riskier just because there's less studies and less information on them. DPH is short for diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl. This is an over-the-counter antihistamine that at high doses can produce deliriant effects. And before you start saying, oh, Benadryl's soft, what the hell can that do? You're going to learn that you don't mess with Benadryl. The main effects of DPH are very convincing hallucinations and also dysphoria. Dysphoria is the opposite of euphoria, 
So basically, you feel shitty. Most users of DPH describe it as a very negative experience that they never want to have in their life again. DPH causes nausea and body discomfort at most of the higher doses. It also makes you feel like you weigh a ton and like the gravity switch has been turned up. So like suddenly you feel like you're a thousand pounds and it's hard to move. People describe short and painful jolts of electricity that go through their body at the same cadence as hiccups. So basically just random jolts of electricity going through you. Another common effect is feeling and seeing bugs under your skin, which sounds terrible. And a regular heartbeat is also very common, and this can cause sudden cardiac death. You can also have a thing called a gustatory hallucination, and this happens when you take the drug, is you taste an extremely foul metallic taste, even for several days after you've taken the drug. Also, the Benadryl just makes you stupid. Like, you can barely function and do basic things. There is analysis suppression, which means you can't make basic decisions and complete basic tasks. Anxiety and paranoia also happens with DPH. It can cause extreme confusion to the point where you can't understand simple sentences. Your vision can also go blurry to the point of blindness, and this can last several days after you've taken the drug. It can also induce psychotic delirium, which some people have described as living the worst nightmare of your life while you're awake. So yeah, like I said, you don't mess with Benadryl. 2CI is a synthetic drug that causes hallucinations and also acts as a stimulant. This is another one of these designer drugs that's often used in the partying and raving scene. The body high can apparently be very uncomfortable, described as being intense pins and needles over every square inch of your body. RC disassociatives are just more designer drugs that are trying to mimic disassociatives. So like I said before, very risky, not good stuff. DOX is short for substituted dimethoxyamphetamine, which is a psychedelic amphetamine. They usually produce strong visuals and long lasting cognitive and physical stimulation. Often it's passed off as LSD, but the thing with DOX is it has a very long come up period. So people often think they've gotten a bad batch of LSD. So instead of waiting to see effects, they take more, which then causes an overdose. Now on to tier seven. 2M2B, which is short for 2-methyl-2-butanol, is an alcohol that causes depressive and hypnotic effects. It's described as having a strong smell similar to gasoline. So that's a great sign. You should definitely drink that. The problem with this alcohol is that it's very sedating to the point it probably will just put you to sleep. Fly agaric is a poisonous psychedelic mushroom that causes hallucinogenic, depressive, and deliriant effects. It's been historically used by shamans, and it looks like the stereotypical mushroom you see in pop culture, like the red cap with the white dots on it. Its main danger is actually confusing it with another type of mushroom, which can often happen. It looks like a death cap mushroom, which if eaten can cause seizures. Tamazepan is a benzodiazepine, which causes anti-anxiety, sedative, hypnotic, muscle relaxant, anticonvulsant, and amnesic effects. It's only used for short-term treatment of insomnia and as a pre-operation sedative. It is extremely sedating and can even force people into unconsciousness at higher doses. Tamazepam has the highest rate of overdoses among all other benzodiazepines. In the 1980s, Tamazepam had the highest number of deaths per million prescriptions compared to any other medication. Because of these reasons, Tamazepam is rarely prescribed, which is why it's so far down on the iceberg, because it's very rare to come across. Datura is a poisonous plant that causes delirium and anticholinergic effects. The toxicity of Datura is determined by the weather, where it's planted, and how old it is. So this makes it very unpredictable and very dangerous to take. It's so bad it can sometimes be used as a poison for suicide or murder. And in terms of effects, it's basically just Benadryl again, but worse. So don't fuck with the Tura. I'm being serious. <laughs> MXC, which is short for methoxetamine, is a research chemical that produces disassociative effects. The only documented human recreational use was in 2010, and then by 2011, 
the drug was banned globally pretty much, so there's very little information on it. Quaaludes, which is the brand name for methaqualone, is a central nervous system depressant that causes sedative and hypnotic effects. This drug was popular in the 1970s, but isn't so much anymore and is very hard to find. Quaaludes are extremely sedating and can cause complete unconsciousness. Memantine is a drug that's used to treat Alzheimer's, but it also has disassociative effects. This drug is typically not taken recreationally. At high doses, it can cause disassociative anesthesia, which does have some hallucinogenic effects. But honestly, it'd be pretty rare to see anybody using this drug recreationally. Z drugs are non-benzodiazepines that have similar effects to benzodiazepines and are used for the treatment of insomnia and anxiety. The three Z drugs are Zapoclone, Zalapon, and Zolpidum, which is also known as Ambien. These drugs cause heavy sedation and often amnesia. Z drugs are extremely addictive and aren't prescribed very often anymore. Salvia is a Mexican plant that contains salvinorin A, which is a substance that can create a disassociative state and hallucinations. A common hallucination that happens when taking salvia is known as salvia gravity. This is where you start to feel like you're being pulled out of your body, and sometimes you can even see yourself in the third person. The general cognitive effects are extreme thought suppression and extreme confusion. Because of this, people see salvia as a drug devoid of personal introspection, and more so just an interesting experience. Another common hallucination with salvia is that objects around you start transforming, they start becoming alive and moving around. There's lots of videos on YouTube of people tripping on salvia and it just looks like they're out of their mind, to be honest. DIPD is short for ditropyl tryptamine, which is an obscure psychedelic substance that is an analog of DMT. What makes DIPD different than other drugs is the hallucinations are mostly auditory. When you take it, your hearing becomes distorted and also apparently everything gets pitched lower. So if someone's talking, they'll talk in a lower voice. It also makes music disharmonious and all disorganized and unrecognizable. This is a very rare drug that a lot of people have not experienced. Now on to tier eight where these drugs are obscure as hell. A lot of them I couldn't even find stuff on or just very minimal information. Bromo Dragonfly, despite having a cool name, really sucks. It is a psychedelic amphetamine, benzodifuran. It is very potent and the effects can last up to several days. It's very easy to overdose on and there's been many hospitalizations and deaths directly linked to Bromo Dragonfly. Bromo Dragonfly is a vasoconstrictor, which means it constricts the veins and blood vessels in various parts of the body. Specifically, it can cut off blood to the limbs. And if this happens, this can lead to necrosis and then eventually amputation. So put simply, if you take Bromo Dragonfly, you'll trip for days and possibly have your limbs chopped off. MK801, also known as disocilpine, is a glutamate regulator. It has anticonvulsant and disassociative anesthetic effects. This drug is not clinically used because when they tested it on rats, they started developing lesions on their brain. It also impaired the rat's ability to learn new tasks and caused general cognitive disruption. The chance of overdosing on MK801 is very high and it's often seen as not very pleasant compared to other disassociatives. It also has a long lasting duration of effects and can cause amnesia. For these reasons, it's rarely used recreationally and since it's not used clinically, it's a very hard drug to come across. Ibogaine, which is short for 10-methoxy ibogaine, is a psychedelic that naturally occurs in the iboga tree of central West Africa. It's a powerful hallucinogen and stimulant that often keeps people up for multiple days. Many users of the drug describe it as a rebirth experience or an extremely introspective experience. Xenon is an elemental gas that produces psychoactive effects similar to nitrous oxide. This being dissociation, anesthesia, and euphoria. Xenon is actually neuroprotective against deprivation of oxygen in the brain, and it's used for extremely premature babies to stop brain damage. Recreational use of xenon is very limited, 
because it's very expensive and hard to obtain. Carfentanil is an extremely strong opioid that's used to anesthetize large animals, such as elephants and rhinoceroses. Carfentanil is 100 times more toxic than regular fentanyl and has even been proposed to be used in the chemical weapon of mass destruction. I think it's safe to say that if a drug is proposed as a weapon of mass destruction, that you shouldn't take it. Don't do it. HA966 is a molecule that produces neuroprotective, anticonvulsant, anti-anxiety, sedative, and hypnotic effects. HA966 kind of sounds like an element that's just made up in a movie or something, and for how rare it is, it might just be true. This drug was used in the 1960s to treat tremors, but that's essentially all the information you can find on it, and it's probably not accessible today. DMHP, which is short for a hard-ass word, so let me read it, dimethylheptylprean, is a synthetic analog of THC, which is supposed to mimic the effects of cannabis. It was originally developed by the United States military in 1949 as a chemical weapon that could cause non-lethal incapacitation. They would test this drug on soldiers who volunteered, and it would make them so high, they wouldn't be able to complete their military duties for three days straight. The drug, however, caused low blood pressure, and the study was eventually scrapped. So this means that somewhere in some military base, there's a box of the synthetic weed that hits so hard you're stoned for three days, but no one's ever gonna find it or ever use it. Symmetry is the street name for Salvinorin B methoxymethyl. This is a semi-synthetic version of Salvinorin A, which was found in Salvia, if you remember. Compared to Salvinorin A, it's five times more potent and lasts way longer. And that's really all I could find on this drug. It seems to be really obscure. So this brings us to the end of the drug iceberg. And I think for me, the most interesting one was actually Benadryl. I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and thank you for watching.